Hello students, the topic for today's class is membrane proteins. In this module, we will be learning about membrane proteins. The main objectives of this module is to study the types or groups of proteins associated with cell membranes and to study the structure and function of these classes of membrane proteins. Cellular membranes are made of phospholipid bilayer with various proteins associated with it. Although every biological membrane has the same basic bilayer structure, proteins associated with a particular membrane are responsible for its distinctive properties. The kinds and amounts of proteins associated with biomembranes vary depending on the cell type and subcellular location. Now let's look at the types of membrane proteins. The lipid bilayer provides a distinctive two-dimensional hydrophobic environment for membrane proteins. These proteins interact with membranes in three different ways. Some are embedded within the hydrophobic core of the phospholipid bilayer. Other proteins are associated with the cytosolic or the exoplasmic leaflets of the bilayer. So, on the basis of their position with respect to the membrane, they can be classified into three categories, integral, lipid anchored, and peripheral. Let's look at the integral membrane proteins first. These proteins are also called intrinsic proteins. Most of them span the phospholipid bilayer and have one or more segments that are embedded in it. Most integral proteins contain residues with hydrophobic side chains that interact with fatty acyl groups of the membrane phospholipids, thus anchoring the protein to the membrane. These transmembrane proteins contain one or more membrane-spanning domains as well as cytoplasmic and exoplasmic domains from four to several hundred residues long, extending into the aqueous medium on cytoplasmic and exoplasmic sides of the bilayer, respectively. In all the transmembrane proteins examined to date, the membrane-spanning domains are alpha helices or multiple beta strands. In single-pass transmembrane proteins, the polypeptide chain crosses the lipid bilayer only once. Whereas in multi-pass transmembrane proteins, the polypeptide chain crosses multiple times. Integral proteins containing membrane-spanning alpha helical domains are embedded in membranes by hydrophobic interactions with the lipid interior of the bilayer and probably also by ionic interactions with the polar head groups of the phospholipids. Glycophorin, a major erythrocyte membrane protein, exhibits both types of interaction. As shown in the figure, glycophorin contains a membrane embedded alpha helix composed entirely of hydrophobic or uncharged amino acids. Although glycophorin as a monomer has a single membrane embedded alpha helix spanning the bilayer, this protein is present in erythrocyte membranes as a dimer of two identical polypeptide chains. The two membrane spanning alpha helices of glycophorin are thought to form a coiled coil structure stabilized by specific interactions between the amino acid side chains at the interface of the two helices. Many other transmembrane proteins contain two or more membrane-spanning alpha helices. For instance, a large and important family of integral proteins is defined by the presence of seven membrane-spanning alpha helices. More than 150 such seven-spanning membrane proteins have been identified. This class of integral proteins is typified by bacteriorhodopsin, a protein found in a photosynthetic bacterium. Absorption of light by the retinal group attached to the bacteriorhodopsin causes a conformational change in the protein that results in pumping of the protons from the cytosol across the bacterial membrane to the extracellular space. The proton concentration gradient 
thus generated across the membrane is used to synthesize ATP. Another group of transmembrane proteins are the aquaporins. They are a large family of highly conserved proteins that transport water, glycerol, and other hydrophilic molecules across biomembranes. There are also multipass transmembrane proteins, which are tetramers of four identical subunits. Each of the four subunits has six membrane-spanning alpha helices. On the other hand, the porins are a class of transmembrane proteins whose structure differs radically from that of other integral proteins. Several types of porins are found in the outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria, such as E. coli. They are trimeric transmembrane proteins. Each subunit is barrel-shaped with beta strands, forming the wall and a transmembrane pore in the center. The outer membrane protects an intestinal bacterium from harmful agents like antibiotics, bile salts, and proteases, but permits the uptake and disposal of small hydrophilic molecules, including nutrients and waste products. The beta barrel proteins are also abundant in the outer membrane of mitochondria, chloroplasts, and many bacteria. All transmembrane proteins, along with glycolipids, are asymmetrically oriented in the bilayer. Its cytosolic segments are always facing the cytoplasm, and the exoplasmic segments are always facing the opposite side of the membrane. This asymmetry in protein orientation confers different properties on the two membrane faces. Many transmembrane proteins are glycosylated. Such transmembrane glycoproteins are always oriented in such a way that all the carbohydrate chains are in the exoplasmic domain. Both glycoproteins and glycolipids are abundant in the plasma membranes of eukaryotic cells and in the membranes of intracellular compartments that are involved in the endocytic and secretory pathways. However, they are absent in the mitochondrial membrane, chloroplast lamellae, and several other intracellular membranes. Because the carbohydrate chains of the glycoproteins and glycolipids extend into the intracellular matrix, they are able to interact with lectins, growth factors, and antibodies. Now let's come to peripheral membrane proteins. Peripheral membrane proteins, or extrinsic proteins, do not interact with the hydrophobic core of the phospholipid bilayer. Instead, they are usually bound to the membrane indirectly by interactions with integral membrane proteins, or directly by interactions with lipid polar head groups. So the hydrophobic domains are embedded in the lipid membrane, and the hydrophilic domains transduce the intercellular signaling. The peripheral membrane proteins include the G protein coupled receptors, receptor tyrosine kinases, channels, and the transporters. Peripheral proteins localized to the cytosolic phase of the plasma membrane include the cytoskeletal proteins spectrin and actin in erythrocytes and the enzyme protein kinase C. This enzyme shuttles between the cytosol and the cytosolic phase of the plasma membrane and plays a role in signal transduction. The peripheral membrane proteins regulate and are regulated by several signaling molecules. These proteins transduce signals triggered by the outside stimulus into the cells, which leads to the regulation of gene and protein expression. The peripheral membrane proteins consist of several classes and activate the downstream signaling pathways involving in cellular changes. Other peripheral proteins, including certain proteins of the extracellular matrix, are localized to the outer or the exoplasmic surface of the plasma membrane. Such associations of the peripheral proteins with the cytoskeleton provide support for various cellular membranes, helping to determine the cell shape and mechanical properties and play a role in the two-way communication between the cell interior and the exterior. Peripheral proteins on the other surface of the plasma membrane and the exoplasmic domain of the integral membrane proteins are often attached to the components of the extracellular matrix 
or to the cell wall surrounding the bacterial and plant cells, providing crucial interface between the cell and its environment. An important group of peripheral membrane proteins are water-soluble enzymes, phospholipases that associate with the polar head groups of membrane phospholipids. These enzymes have an important role in the degradation of damaged or aged cell membranes. Now let's study lipid anchor membrane proteins. In eukaryotic cells, Covalently attached to lipids can anchor some otherwise typically water-soluble proteins to one or the other leaflet of the membrane. In such lipid-anchored proteins, the lipid hydrocarbon chains are embedded in the bilayer. But the protein itself does not enter the bilayer. The lipid anchors used to anchor proteins to the cytosolic phase are not used for the exoplasmic phase and vice versa. One group of the cytosolic proteins are anchored to the cytosolic phase of a membrane by a fatty acyl group like meristate or palmitate covalently attached to an N-terminal glycine residue by a process called acylation. For example, VSRC, a mutant form of a cellular protein tyrosine kinase, induces abnormal cellular growth that can lead to cancer only when it has a meristylated N-terminus. A second group of cytosolic proteins are anchored to the membranes by a hydrocarbon chain attached to a cysteine residue at or near the C-terminus, a process called prenylation. For example, RAS, a GTP superfamily protein that functions in intracellular signaling, is recruited to the cytosolic phase of membranes by such prenyl anchors RAB proteins, which also belong to GTP superfamily, are similarly bound to the cytosolic phase of intracellular vesicles by prenyl anchors. These proteins are required for the fusion of vesicles with their target membranes during intracellular trafficking. A third type of anchors called GPI, glycosyl phosphatidyl inositol anchors, also bind some cell surface proteins and specialized proteins to the exoplasmic phase of the membranes. GPI anchors differ greatly in different cell types, but they always contain phosphatidyl inositol, whose two fatty acyl chains extend into the lipid bilayer, just like a typical membrane phospholipid. Phosphoethanolamine, which covalently links the anchor to the C-terminus of the protein and several other sugar residues. So, GPI anchors are glycolipids. Several enzymes, including alkaline phosphatase, fall in this class. Various experiments have shown that the GPI anchor is both necessary and sufficient for binding these cell surface proteins to the membrane. Now let's see the effect of detergents on membrane proteins. Membrane proteins are often difficult to purify and study mostly because they are tight association with membrane lipids and other membrane proteins. Detergents are amphipathic molecules that disrupt membranes by intercalating into the phospholipid bilayers and can thus be used to solubilize lipids and many membrane proteins. The hydrophobic part of the detergent molecule is attracted to the phospholipid hydrocarbons and mingles with them readily. The hydrophilic part is strongly attracted to water. Some detergents such as the bile salts are natural products, but most are synthetic molecules developed for cleaning and for dispersing oil and water in food industry. Ionic detergents like sodium dioxycholate and sodium dodecyl sulfate contain a charged group while non-ionic detergents like Triton X100 and octyl glucoside lack a charged group. Ionic and non-ionic detergents interact differently with proteins and have different uses in the lab. Ionic detergents bind to the exposed hydrophobic regions of the membrane proteins as well as to the hydrophobic cores of water-soluble proteins. Because of their charge, these ionic detergents can disrupt ionic and hydrogen bonds and thus can denature proteins. Non-ionic detergents, on the other hand, do not denature proteins and thus are useful in extracting proteins in their folded and active forms 
from membranes before they are purified. Mobility of membrane proteins in the bilayer. Like membrane lipids, membrane proteins do not flip-flop across the lipid bilayer, but they do rotate about an axis perpendicular to the plane of the bilayer. We call it rotational diffusion. In addition, many proteins are able to move laterally within the membrane, and that is lateral diffusion. The first direct evidence that some plasma membrane proteins are mobile in the plane of the membrane was provided by an experiment in which mouse cells were fused with human cells to produce hybrid cells. Two differently labeled antibodies were used to distinguish mouse and human plasma membrane proteins. The two sets of proteins were found diffused and mixed over the entire hybrid cell surface within half an hour or so. The lateral diffusion rates of membrane proteins can be measured by using the technique of fluorescence recovery after photobleaching, called FRAP. Cells also have a way of confining membrane proteins to specific domains in a continuous lipid bilayer. In epithelial cells, such as those that line the gut and the kidney tubules, certain plasma membrane enzymes and transport proteins are confined to the epical surface of the cells, whereas others are confined to the basal and lateral surfaces. This asymmetric distribution of membrane proteins is essential for the epithelium to carry out its functions. Now we come to the end of today's module. While the lipid bilayer determines the basic structure of biological membranes, proteins are responsible for most membrane functions, serving as specific receptors, enzymes, transport proteins, cell addition, signal transduction, and so on. Membrane proteins are categorized into three groups, integral, peripheral, and lipid anchored proteins. Many membrane proteins extend across the lipid bilayer and are called transmembrane proteins. Other membrane-associated proteins do not span the bilayer, but instead are attached to either side of the membrane, either by non-covalent interactions with transmembrane proteins or via covalently attached lipid groups. Many membrane proteins exhibit mobility in the plane of the membrane as a lateral and or rotational diffusion but cannot flip-flop across the bilayer and are distributed asymmetrically, which is essential to their function. Thank you.